The forces of evil. I'm telling you, it's forces of evil interrupted. <laughs> okay, let me continue. Um, hang on. I hope at least some people have come back, but um, about 39 right now. I'll uh, wait a little bit until more would come back. That's a bummer. You know, I get ready, I research, I prepare, I try to... Well, I set everything up and I try to deliver and then such a blow, boom. The live stream cuts somewhere in the middle. Uh, just incredible. 200, I'll wait at least until 500 show up. Should be like 30, 40 seconds because people tend to come back when the stream is interrupted. If not, then I'll just continue. Anyway, um, I told you a story about the brain surgeon. My friends, um, I'm going to turn on the comments now for just a little bit. You let me know if you heard what I said before. Perhaps it was cutting out, perhaps it was buffering. Let me know. The chat's on. I'll leave it for a couple seconds, for <laughs> what, a few seconds too. Let me know. Let me know what was happening. There you go. Mommy? Black ad. Uh, howdy, howdy. So what... W wait a second. That Don't... Welcome back. Um, so what what happened? Was I cutting out and where did you hear me the last? Last thing was labels on heart. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me turn off chat for now. Um, so I was asking about the doctor about the heart you know if there was a uh, you know a writing on the hearts christian catholic christian eastern orthodox christian perhaps non-believer something like that and he told me there's nothing like that i said perhaps there's micro labeling micro you know there's some dots or some tiny tiny specks labels you could <coughs> you know crosses or not crosses or something like that you could look up in a microscope. And he told me, he said, listen, I know hearts so well. I know every millimeter and I have not seen anything like that before. All hearts are created equal. The only difference is in size, in weight. Some are a little bigger, some are a little smaller, depends on the size of a person. And some weight more, some weight less. And of course, uh, there are they, some have conditions, different conditions. But all hearts, healthy hearts, are created equal. They beat, they, they live, uh, there's blood, they pump blood, and the blood is liquid and it's red. Okay, so therefore, we, we're all created the same. I said, okay, okay, thank you so much, you've been a great help. And I called another doctor. Uh, the fellow that I met here in Tashkent who fled Russia just like I did and he is the neurosurgeon the brain surgeon you know you've heard of the guy I've talked to him quite a few times and I talked to him about the brain brain of a human being I asked him the same question I said look have you seen brain up close he looked at me said well I'm a brain surgeon you know <laughs> I've seen I've seen before I said how many brains have you seen I said uh, probably a few thousand brains said okay you have experience um, perhaps when you operate on the brain it has a writing said Catholic Christian or Eastern Orthodox Christian or non-believer or you know anything else I said no not such a thing I didn't say anything I said perhaps this small writing you missed he said no 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 I know I know the brains you know said nothing like that. I know tumors, I know conditions, I know that <coughs> veins getting clogged up and all of these things, but 
no writings. And he said, all brains are create, created equal. The only difference is size and weight and, of course, conditions. So say, I got the same answer as I got from the cardio surgeon. I said, okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then, then I started thinking myself. Um, I don't know much about, I didn't see open heart surgery. I didn't see, thank goodness, I didn't see. Uh, you know, how they operate on brain, things like that. But I've seen lots of people with their emotions and their feelings. And perhaps I ask myself a question. Perhaps some Christians, for example, Catholic Christians, are very different from um, Eastern Orthodox Christians in terms of their emotions and feelings, how they feel love or the, how they feel something else. And uh, I answered that question very fast because I've been around. I lived in the United States. I saw many Catholic Christians. My ex-wife was Catholic Christian, well, still is. Um, all her family. I went to, a, in Russia, the, the Catholic church is called Kostyol. Um my mom and dad, my mom is still is, and my dad was Baptist. Um, I myself consider myself really an Eastern Orthodox Church, but always prayed with my dad. Um, so, and guess what? All people in the United States, in Ukraine, yes, I also lived in Ukraine a little over a year, in Uzbekistan, in Russia, in Iran, in all the countries I've been to, they are absolutely the same. They feel same feelings and they experience same emotions. We are created equal. God created us in the image of himself. <sighs> If hearts are the same, if brains are the same, if the way we're having, are, we're feeling the same, you know, um, then really our faith to our Lord Jesus Christ is the same. Catholics also believe in Jesus Christ. And basically the same thing. Then how come Patriarch Kirill, and the president of Russia, and Russian minister of defense, and the generals responsible, and even people on the front lines, the officers, how come they did not come out and demand for a ceasefire on Christian that is celebrated in Ukraine in the late December. How come Patriarch Kirill didn't come out and ask for a ceasefire for Russian army for December 24th and 25th for 36 hours, same? How come Vladimir Putin didn't order military to stop bombing Ukrainian cities on Christmas that happened in Ukraine was celebrated in Ukraine in the late December. How about New Year? Hey, he said many times, we're all brothers and sisters. I'm not so sure of that anymore. Um, I still consider them so, but they, I'm pretty sure they, most of them, they, they, they don't consider me or other Russians brother. And they don't have brothers and sisters in Russia anymore. Um, how come, despite or all our similarities in culture, in history, in upbringing, we were all part of the same country, mere 20, uh, 30 years ago. How come, when we're all celebrating New Year, how come Russian reporters on Channel 1, the prime uh, channel 
for entire Russia, okay? How come on the 31st of December at 6 p.m., a reporter came up and the biggest news of the day he announced and he was smiling, he was happy about that. The rain of rockets onto Ukraine, 6 p.m., six hours before New Year. And he was actually happily reporting that. And they were showing someone's cell phone uh, video. And the person was saying, oh, look at the multiple. There were over a dozen traces of rockets flying from Russia into Ukraine. And they were commenting, look at those rockets. They're flying. Every single rocket was bringing death to Ukrainians. Not just destroy infrastructure, you know, roads, but people. Children, women, men, elderly, everyone. How come the ceasefire was not ordered then? And it was ordered just on our Christmas. Now, Ukrainians, well, they refused. They said... <laughs> I'm sorry, but we're sorry, but um, we celebrated Christmas two weeks before, and there was a rain of rockets. Well, obviously there was. Um, and we celebrated New Year, and there was a rain of rockets from Russia flying. So we're not going to do a ceasefire right now. We're going to do business as usual. We're going to keep on protecting our country. And... Uh, I don't really understand. I, I don't know how you cannot understand them. I think their words are full of logic and common sense. How could they do a ceasefire for Christmas, you know, early January, if Russians bullied them two weeks before and ridiculed them? You know, how could they do that? And immediately after Ukrainians refused to do that, the shitstorm started. Well, not even a shitstorm, but shit tornado. Pardon my language, you know. Pardon me for being rude. Um, lots of people came out and said, how could they? How could they refuse? How could they do that? They're just not human beings. They're Satanists. They're just, oh my gosh. I'm not going to quote many of them. I'll quote you one person, <coughs> one of Russia's bosses the deputy head of Russia's Security Council, the deputy head of Russia's Military Industrial Commission, um, and an incredibly powerful guy in Russia, former president of Russian Federation, Dmitry Medvedev. Um, he came up with another message right after Ukrainians refused the ceasefire. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about what he said. I'm going to quote him. You listen to him. Very, very carefully. I quote. The hand of Christian charity was reached out to Ukrainians for the great holiday of Christmas. Their leaders rejected it. I think most of our servicemen taking part in the special military operation calmly exhal exhaled after hearing the refusal of the main Ukrainian clowns to cease fire on Christmas. Fewer problems and guile. It is a pity for people who have lost their opportunity to, to go to church. But pigs have no faith and no innate sense of gratitude. They understand only brute force and squealingly demand grub from their owners. Their training is based on this. And it will be continued by the western swineherds. Even the illiterate German grandmother Baerbock and a number of others looking at the European Pixty managed to blurt about blurt out about the inadmissibility of the ceasefire. Well, the hairs of the Nazis never pitied either people or animals. They are no strangers to that. I still, you know, that's what Dmitry Medvedev said. 
I still don't understand whether Dmitry Medvedev is sincere in his messages, which he sends quite frequently, and they're absolutely atrocious. Whether he's sincere or he's under influence of substance, some kind of a substance, or perhaps he's uh, like sincere and primitive, you know, straightforward. He writes what he thinks. Or perhaps he's brilliantly smart and he gives out these messages with Easter eggs, messages, small messages insides of them. I don't, I, I still, I'm, I'm trying to figure out because option number one, if he's straightforward and then he writes what he thinks, that'd be so primitive. That's unbelievable. But for the former president of Russia, it's hard to believe, okay? Substance, I'm not sure. But number three, he's so evil, evil and brilliant, you know, in these messages. But let me address a couple things he said. I quote, I think most of our servicemen taking part in a special military operation calmly exhaled after hearing the refusal of the main Ukrainian clowns to cease fire on Christmas. So by writing this, he's suggesting that this ceasefire was not a real sincere thing, but just something for just for the show they just offered and when refused they're like oh okay keep on going why would he said something like that and another thing is absolutely i don't even know how to approach it it's a pity for people who have lost the opportunity to go to church on January 5th, uh, 6th, and 7th. It's a pity for people who have lost the opportunity to go to church. Listen to very carefully to this. Uh, five million people lost their opportunity to go to celebrate Christmas in Ukraine two weeks ago. You, you, and I'm talking... To Medvedev, who wrote this, you took this opportunity away from them. Not just you, you know, uh, but everyone who made decision not to have ceasefire, to keep on sending rockets to Ukraine on the 25th of December. That was an opportunity for lots of people to celebrate Christmas, and they did not because they spent that day and that night in bomb shelters, in places underground somewhere, um, somewhere deep. It's you. Your rockets were hitting Ukraine. It's you who stole their Christmas. It's you, not just you, but including you. And a bunch of other folks who made and executed this decision. They stole Christmas from the Ukrainians. And you know what? Not only Christmas. They stole the entire year of 2022. They stole human lives. They stole happiness of families, kids, mothers, fathers, children, um they've stole life from so many Ukrainians. <sighs> and I still fail to understand why. And this has been my message. Thank you so very much for coming, listening, giving me a chance. Unfortunately, it was interrupted. I don't really know what happened. But these things happen. Folks, please let me know what you think of my message. Uh, I was pretty straightforward. Whether you agree with me or not, support me or not, I would love to hear your feedback. Thank you so very much. Turning on the comments for the second time now.
Thank you. English only, no Russian, please. You'd be banned so fast. Your message would be deleted. Um, howdy, everyone. Howdy, mods. Mommy, Blackhead, Lorna, Harry, Bob, Amir. Howdy, howdy. The usual suspects. Thank you so much for coming back, giving me a chance. Hope everyone is having a good Sunday. If you want me to hear the message, uh, if you want me to see your message or question, please put it in caps so it's much easier for me to see and um, put inside Rush after add sign so it appears in a large orange box. Again, it's much easier for me to spot it that way. Just like Harry Potter did. Howdy, howdy, Harry. Uh, Daydream Believer says I did not hear anything. Buffering after 11 minutes. I'm sorry. Forces of evil sometimes come down and interfere with my streams. That happened before so many times. Um, sometimes it's not forces of evil. Sometimes my technical mistakes. But lately, I've kind of handled everything down quite well and i don't know what happened today um the usual very usual suspects lorna mommy you still remember the days when buffered a lot and gosh it was terrible anyway Sam K, howdy, howdy. Again, looking for the f messages in caps. Alkis, thank you so much. My point exactly. Lots of orthodox countries celebrate doesn't really matter when we celebrate is this about the date that we celebrate christmas or is it about the celebration of our god and our faith and our families and our love what's really i i don't understand what's the difference okay and i truly i don't understand that the patriarch of russian church and the president and the big bosses what is their thinking? What is their logic behind all this? Okay. They think it's the date that they celebrated. They think it's terribly important for Ukrainians to celebrate in on January 7th. Isn't it about love? Isn't it about, you know, I just don't get it one thing. I don't get one thing. I don't understand how Vladimir Putin, Dmitry Medvedev, you know, and the likes, how they're not afraid. You know, how they don't look up and think, what's going to happen after I depart? Okay. Uh, gosh. Thomas Elliott, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you for your support. I appreciate it. No message, but this is a huge message. Olaf, uh, thank you so much also. And White Lightning, one thing the Z-Bots say really bothers me. 
You can't just kill people because they're of pagan religion. What happened to witches in Europe or Indians in the USA was unjust. Yeah, a few Ukrainians practice Viking religion. White Lightning, thanks for support and thanks for the question. I'm going to take you to my description of conversations with uh, surgeons. The Viking religion, you know, people who practice Viking religion, their hearts are absolutely the same. The people who think they don't believe in God, their hearts and brains are absolutely the same as the ones who go to church every week or every day or twice a day, you know. It doesn't really make a difference on your heart. You have no label. It makes a difference how you feel, what you feel, but it's not about your... Um, how do I say that? Religion. Uh, it's about who you are. It's about your connection with God. Because you have direct connection. You know, your heart is connected to God directly. Uh, he talks to each one of us. I really doubt that he cares too much what we practice. You know, I was talking to the brain surgeon, uh, this guy from Russia, so, a long time ago. On the first day that I met him, we had a very long conversation. At the end of the day, I asked him, I said, do you believe in God? And uh, he said, well, I am. I believe in higher being, but I don't believe in God, but I believe there's something out there. I said, okay, do most uh, brain surgeons believe like you? Or they don't believe what they believe. He said, they're believers, but they come to God. They come to the idea of God closer to their 50s. And it's like a standard normal thing for brain surgeons, you know. <coughs> they probably understand or feel something different, something more towards their 50s. But question, does God love that guy, brain surgeon, that, you know, he thinks he believes in something else? Does he love him any less than he loves any other person? Well, if he did, he wouldn't have um, sent him help, okay? Uh, the God doesn't care. Viking, whoever you are, you know, you're a human being. You have heart and it beats and it has love in it. And that's it. That's it. Oh, yeah. The more I research, the more faith I lose in fighting more good Russians like you. It all comes down to what we believe at our core. The West after World War II, never again. Russia, we can repeat. Thank you, Damien. Thank you for being here, coming back every day. Thank you for your questions. They're definitely food for thought. Sometimes not questions, sometimes statements. They're much appreciated. Uh, it, this one is not a question. I don't know what to say to you right now. I still don't understand how many Russians had weekend repeat. And that's true. That's true. I saw it in the cars, decals, and things like that. We can repeat that. My question was like, what are you going to repeat? World War II? What? Anyway. Uh, Janice Burgess. Merry Christmas, no matter what day. Nobody knows exactly what the real date is. <laughs> exactly. Janice, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, the usual suspect. Adele Blue. Uh, thank you. I will definitely keep it up. I appreciate the support. And Brian Struvig, the serial supporter. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, BG, hi, Constantine. Wishing you and your family health and safety from your old stomping grounds in Ventura, California. Wow. Ventura, California. What a place. You know, there are some places in my heart that are more dear than the others. Ventura is definitely one of those places. It's not just Ventura, it's entire Ventura County, you know. Uh, you drive up the coast from Ventura to Carpinteria and up to Santa Barbara, and this is one of the most fantastic 
drives and fantastic places I've seen. It's just, you fall in love into that place immediately. Thank you so much, BJ. Thank you. I appreciate it. I wish I was there. Lionel, howdy, howdy. Philip Miller, the message is clear. You had the opportunity to celebrate our Christmas of our religion, not yours. <laughs> but 5 million celebrate in December, 8 million celebrate, um, well, the entire Ukraine celebrates New Year. It's Ukraine's New Year, our New Year, it's the same thing, you know. You know, just a phrase popped up in my head. I, I heard it when I was uh, younger, much younger. Mark Twain once said something like this. Americans are so different, but they all have one thing in common, the love of iced water. And in a way, that's a parallel to God. We're all so different, but we have love to God. It that it really it makes us absolutely same. Joe's Rames, Amir, it was great to see you yesterday enjoying pizza. Yeah, uh, looked like you were having a good time with Alex and. Uh, Houston turned out to be much safer place than I thought it was because of all those stories how dangerous you get on the street and then you get robbed and then you get shot because everyone wears a gun and stuff like that. So, <laughs> you know, I was surprised to see uh, nothing of that going on in the background and you're sitting outside enjoying pizza, just like in Tashkent, you know. <laughs> um, Steven, howdy, howdy. A little bumpy today. Sorry about that. Double M. Sorry if I asked already, just got here. Do you think he's sick? Seen some news articles lately. Rumors are going wild, but I asked my doctor friends. They said, you know what, you can't, you can't, in order to be, to understand that a person is sick, you have to be his doctor, okay? You have to know the history, you know, have to know, like, you have to do the blood work and then uh, look closely and stuff like that. It's really I impossible to say if he's not, an, if he is or he's not. Just rumors. Something we can't be sure about, so I have no clue. Nico, thank you. Hello. Did you talk with your community about human chain? Yes, I did. Uh, or other things. I think the chain would be good in Ukraine, made by Russian people. Um, I did talk to a few people. Um, we contacted, well, one of the lawyers here, um, and he strongly suggested we don't do that. Because... It's zero crime country, but there is a law in, this is crazy, okay, but there is a law that every single meeting of more than 15 people, a group of more 15 people, even if you go to sauna, even if you go to a restaurant, must be reported and run by the KGB, okay, in writing. It basically they must permit you to gather more than fifteen pe people. That's that's a law. And um, a lawyer here, local Uzbek lawyer, strongly suggested suggested us not to do any gathering on the street. I mean, we can we gather like this morning. There were fi about forty plus of us. We had um, a lecture. A Russian tax expert uh, came and she was telling us 
how we can transfer money to out of Russia, you know, how much taxes we have to pay, how much tax, property taxes and stuff like that. It was like 90 minutes of very heated discussion. Uh, and it's okay inside of a restaurant, but he said if we get outside on the street and start gathering and God forbid, like saying something political, against Ukraine, for Ukraine, for Mars, against Mars, doesn't matter, okay? He said immediately police would come arrest us, and they probably would deport uh, some, if not most of us. So human chain is out of the question, my friend. But we discussed some other things. 777 Donny, thank you so much for your help. Much love from Uzbekistan, thank you. Uh, mixed granny thank you so much for your support also I appreciate it, thank you Nation Demon just had like given sponsorship, uh, gift of sponsorship to five people by the way we had um, private stream yesterday, it was fantastic me and my wife Natasha, uh, about 90 minutes of just conversations. We enjoyed it very much, and it seems like people uh, enjoyed it as well. So thank you so much for coming yesterday, sponsors, patrons. Thanks for supporting. And five more people, uh, courtesy of National Demon, can uh, come and join us on Saturday. Next Saturday is going to be on vacation. I'm taking a few days off. Most likely we will be streaming, but on and off. We'll see. Just keep on tuning in for updates. Woody, Woody Love, Woody, Wood, Wood, Wood Love. What happened to live stream? It was cut off in the middle by evil forces. I don't know what happened to it. I did everything right as usual. RC Roscoe, I think you and your family need to go further than where you are. <sighs> think so too I think so too it's one thing to think and another thing is to actually do it Amir come have pizza with me and Alex I'll buy enjoyed yesterday's member stream had to leave a little early I know I know thank you thank you it was was fun it was fun Alex, so carefree, happy-go-lucky. <laughs> uh, well, he suffered a lot in Russia, you know. Damien da Silva, uh, a lot of talk about Navalny here now. Apparently many Russians are openly supporting him. Is this true? Damien, where are you getting your information from? Uh, don't have to send me super chat. Just you know, send me send me a message. I want to know where the heck you get this stuff from. No, no, I'm not talking about you. Like it's just so many times, people write me in the comments and they're totally off. But they say, well, up here people are speaking about this and that. Not too many people. You see, Russia is how to give you the good answer you know Russians have been acting very strangely I in my eyes I don't understand how can you support of attacking another country which is basically hasn't done anything to you hadn't done anything to you yet some a lot of people do support I don't understand that. That that makes me wonder. It makes me on the other side of 
the barricades from them. You know what I mean? Um, so Navalny was very popular among minority of Russians. Young kids, uh, school children, students, younger professionals, and more educated people. But it was not necessarily a figure of support among older Russians, you know. And he he has had a reputation, you know. Um, I have personally some questions to Navalny. I don't question his investigations. I don't question his work, um, investigative journalism work that he has done in the past few years. But I have some question to him, some questions to him way for way before. I remember him from like 2010, 20, 2007. So I have the questions to what he did, was doing back then. Um, no one is talking about him right now. He's in prison. He appears uh, sometimes on the news, but you got to understand they've cut him off Russian media space. He's out of the picture, Damien. Um, Brianna B, Brianna B, thank you so much. Great to see you. Jesus is the reason for the season, uh, Mr. Constantine, and he is love. Thank you, Brianna. This is exactly what I think, and this is what I believe in, and this is what I um, say. If a person has heart that it beats, it's alive, and if it's alive, then it has love. For someone, for something, some people have more love, some people have less love, but I have yet to see one person without love completely, you know. And then God is love, and if you have love in your heart, then you have God in your heart. That's it, you know. You can believe in God, you can say that you don't believe in God, you can whatever you want, but as long as you have heart and there's love in it, you have God. And sooner or later, I mean, life is a journey for each one of us. It's not a destination. Sooner or later, we meet God in our head. Not We, we always have him in our heart, but we meet in, in the head. Okay, most of us do. Sue Ross, thank you. I'm not practicing Christian, but believe in the Christian tenets and that Jesus walked the earth. Thank you. Me too. I mean... Uh, I am practicing. Am I practicing Christian? I've gone to church a few times here in Uzbekistan. It's right around the corner. But I kind of hesitate these days because I'd rather pray sitting at home and close my eyes and talk to God rather than go to Eastern Orthodox Church. I have all these unpleasant pictures popping up that connected with a special military operation. That's how they call war. I know in my heart that he would be saddened to see his teaching twisted like this. Aussie oh, Sue. Thank you so much, Sue. My thoughts too. Thank you. Uh, that's why. That's why you think that uh, Navalny is popular, or his popularity here in Russia has risen. No, it hasn't. People have forgotten about him, unfortunately. Uh, documentary on Navalny has been running on television here. That's why he's making waves in the media space, in the world. I've seen uh, Netflix, I think. Anyway, in one of the one of the platforms i've seen movie about navalny i most likely will watch it's just i don't have time to watch pretty much anything anymore um if i have a few minutes i watch but most likely there's not much new i will learn about navalny because i've no i've known about the guy uh you know a long time damien navalny's daughter was just interviewed on cnn gps program today I agree, Navalny is not perfect. There is no perfect, but much better than Putin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I think he's much better than Putin. But just yes, 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 hands down. But uh, 
interesting. If he's been making waves in the Western media space, then there's a possibility that this is how they start warming him up. And this is how they know more than we do about the current leadership. And they know more than we do about its face, perhaps near future face, faith. No, not faith. Fate, 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 it's fate. Perhaps that's how they trying to warm up Navalny. So once the change is done, he probably would move out and take some place, you know. That's interesting, interesting thought. But that would actually give, uh, would bring up more questions to Navalny, if that's true. Okay. Thank you, Damien. As usual, you give great, <laughs> I can't even say questions, but food for thought. Damien, indeed, thank you so much. Olya, considering how busy you are, I did appreciate you watching my recent video and leaving a comment. I responded, but you probably get too many notifications to know. Thank you. Olya, I get thousands every day. Thousands, literally. I cannot navigate through them. It takes such a long time. I read, um, I read a good portion, so please... Leave comments. They don't go. Uh, they don't go in vain. Uh, but it's just I physically cannot respond to any of them. I respond to few here and there. The ones that I see when I log in, I see the first ones pop in, and then, and then I respond. But that's like luck. Daniel, is Navalny a nationalistic politician? No, he's not. As far as I know, he's not. Uh, he has democratic values for the most part. It's just he has some history 15 years ago that I have some questions about. The biggest, the biggest, just in a very few shorts, short words about Navalny, what I have concerns. I'm not saying if it's true or not, but it's just my concerns and questions. Navalny was convicted a crime, and it was nothing political. It was uh, economic crime. I don't know whether he committed the crime or was fabricated very well that he's innocent, but he was committed anyway, and that was a pretty serious term. And then he was pardoned. You see, it doesn't happen like that in Russia. You don't get pardoned for nothing. Uh, he got pardoned and he started his political activity short, short after. That's a big question to me. Why he was pardoned? Who pardoned him? For what reason? For what purpose? Um, and there is slight concern that he could be a weapon of some power group against another power group within current Russian government. I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong. I don't know. But this is the concern that I have. But he's still, he's the holder of uh, democratic values. And <laughs> hands down, 55 hands down, he'd be much better. You know, Lisa Marshall, <coughs> thank you. Thank you for praying for my husband and son. They're better now. Unfortunately, my mother-in-law just got COVID just when we thought we weren't clear. I would appreciate if you could add her to prayer list. Of course, of course I will. Uh, Susan Marshall. Done. Lisa, thank you so much. Jeffrey Cornish, Merry Christmas inside Russia. Even thought I think I'm saying a little late. Hey, that's okay. Merry Christmas to you. Merry belated Christmas. Thank you for your support. Thanks that much appreciated by the words and uh, Merry Christmas wishing is priceless. Thank you. 
Vel Zaviduk. Thank you. Sam K, we can't have heated debates on here because there's a gas and oil shortage in Europe. You you must be in Europe, right? Klingon Princess, um, I sure enjoyed that Zoom we did a year ago. Congrats to a true supporter. Klingon Princess, thanks for coming back. That's fantastic to see you. But you know what? I'm so if you, if you think that I only remember of one Zoom that we did, the Zoom that where I was trying to convince everyone Russia would never attack Ukraine for. It'd be madness. Well, I am so so ashamed of that Zoom. I keep on telling when I see every time I see Frank, and I see. Um, Nicholas Thompson, he was also in the Zoom, you know, I'm like, oh my God. So I am so, so very sorry, very ashamed that doing that Zoom. Nightbot says if you want to contact Konstantin via email, go to the about section of Inside Russia and write. I'm so backed out, backed up on the emails. Even if you write me today, I won't get to them in quite a few days. Uh, that's a big problem. Riviere, 1862, thank you so much for your support. Thank you. Eastern Canada. Time's up. Three looks so sad. <laughs> I don't know. Looks okay to me. Klingon Princess. That Zoom gave so much history and was nice to see other subs live and interact. No need to shame. For shame, it was valuable information in your opinion at the time. God. Uh. That was crazy. Who would have thought that Russia, Russian leadership would be so insane to attack Ukraine? I sincerely thought what I was saying back then... And every single fact said towards that Russia would never, ever attack Ukraine. And one year later, we find ourselves up to yin yang in stinky substance. Well, this is what happens, you know, when you attack Ukraine. Nesta Rally. Uh, thank you. A plus Russian, you need an assistant to check your email and reply to your comments, not offering, just a suggestion. Uh, you know, I thought about that. I discussed with Natasha, and this is a weird thing. If people write to me, I think they expect me to get back to them. And if, for example, my wife gets back, that's kind of strange, don't you think? So at this point, I can't, I can't really understand how to organize this assistant. I would love to get an assistant and to delegate responsibilities. You know, I've done that in business so many times. I understand without that, there's no scalability and there's no growth. But um, it just limits me. I could have making videos instead. I'm 
trying to answer emails, to do the comments and stuff like that, you know. Uh, anyway. Dirk, howdy, howdy. It's going, it's going okay. It's going okay. Nestor Rally, another super sticker, $10, 10 euro. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jose Marieros, do not torture yourself, my friend. We were all surprised by Putin's stupidity and incompetence and utter madness in invading Ukraine. People didn't even understand why he did it. I tell you more, Joao, I tell you more. I still don't understand why he did it. I have my theories, one main theory. But this is such an atrocity that... York Osmussen, support for your betrusted secretary. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, my friends. Uh, strange and tough stream for me today. Um, Bright Texaco star. <laughs> Thank you. There will be tomorrow. There will be another message. I will. I don't know what to do to not to get interrupted by YouTube. Perhaps it's uh, the forces of evil, those demons who have hijacked my country that I pray against. They striking back, you know. <laughs> Remember uh, when I lived in Uzbekistan. Nine, nine months ago a few times in a row every single time I would start praying there would be buffering that buffering heavy buffering would start like it didn't fail for like five six times in a row five six streams that was insane Ron S they did it for oil and iron ore resources Dude, if it was so easy, okay, if it was so easy. No, they did not do it for oil. They have so much oil in Russia. They don't know what to do with it. They don't have so much metals. They don't know what to do. Right now they have over 30 million of metric ton of metals in Russia stored in the warehouses. They don't know what to do with it. They don't need to invade another country for that. Okay. Uh, it's the same thing as there's been this news all over media space that uh, the Wagner group is fighting for Ukrainian city called Solidar because it has huge deposits of salt. Therefore, the owner of Wagner group wants to get his hands of that salt, and that's going to make him lots of money. That's the craziest idea I have ever heard in my life. That guy is controlling half Russia right now with his private army. That guy is getting so much money, billions and billions of dollars as help from the government. Do you really think that he, he just built a huge skyscraper in St. Petersburg, okay? He has so many income streams, huge income streams. Do you really think that he's going to fight over salt deposit? You know how cheap salt in Russia is? In this, the market is flooded with salt already. What, is he going to sell salt for peanuts here in the Russian market? That's why he's fighting Solidar. You know, so it's the same thing when I hear, oh, Ukrainian Russians invaded for Ukrainian uh, resources. Imagine what Russians have lost in the past 10 months, okay? It's definitely hasn't been about the resources. Far from it. The resources of Ukraine, just a tiny speck. Look at the map of Russia. Look how rich that country is. 
Anyway, uh, Luke King, howdy howdy, was started for. It was started for regime change. Now it is a political survival. Close, yes, yes, that's much closer to the truth. This is what I have learned from you, Mr. K. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Get some sleep made. All the best. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Um, I think he understands the mistake now, but he has no easy way out. If he just moves Russian troops out of Ukraine, his power is going to disappear in a matter of hours, okay? And he's going to be gone. He knows that. He cannot stop. He's placing his own power. You know, he wants to hang on for as long as possible. And then he's sacrificing lives and lives and thousands and thousands every day, you know, <coughs> just for the power. I don't understand. That guy is fearless. I don't understand how every time he looks up, he's not just like shaking out of fear. I would be. Thank you so much, my friends. Um, strange message. Two streams instead of one. Um, thank you so much. Let's pray. Finish the stream. There's a message tomorrow. Probably won't be able to stream day after tomorrow because we're traveling. And guess what? A huge cold wave, uh, freeze wave will hit Tashkent right after we leave. And um, it's going to stay here for quite a few days. So we're lucky. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. See another super chat from Val Zaviduk. What minerals does Ukraine have and what do they manufacture? Their biggest, their biggest um, treasure is land. Agriculture is their number one resource. They are, uh, along with Russia, breadbasket for many countries. They grow the same thing as Russia grows. You know, wheat, uh, sunflower, they do sunflower oil, potatoes, all kinds of stuff. Um, we used to, they used to manufacture lots because Ukraine was the technological center of the entire USSR. But since the disintegration of the USSR, you know, the, the, their manufacturing industry has gone down big time. I know we owned a plant in, in we owned a plant in Ukraine in Zaporozhye. I know that country quite well. I was in charge of that plane. plant. Plant, plant. Oh, it's been an hour and a half of talking. Plant, uh, a supervising. Okay, so not. I wasn't the director or anything, but I was supervising from our corporation. Um, they don't have anything that Russia would invade it for, you know. They're saying oil, gas. How much oil and gas Russia has? Russia needs stability. Russia needs to be included into international community. Russia needs a good image, good standing, good credit rating. Russia needs to trade with other countries. You know, that's what Russia needs. Does not need to go and grab tiny little bit of speck of a uh, Ukrainian gas that it can, it's very expensive because it's not like a regular gas. You just stick the pipe and pump it out. Fracking, it's fracking gas. You know, that's the very expensive stuff. Anyway, if you know what what kind of hugely expensive materials there are in Ukraine, let me know, okay? Because I don't know, I, I don't know of any. My friends, let's let's jump into well, let's pray, let's jump into the prayer now. Let's just pray. Let's finish the stream. Let's uh, let me prepare for the new one. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, thank you so much for giving us this day. Thank you for giving us food on our table. Thank you for putting roofs over our heads. Thank you for surrounding us with the loved ones, people who we love and who love us. Please help our children, keep them safe and healthy. Give us wisdom to bring them in a way that they will make this place a better world. This world a better place and... They will never fight, be engaged into a war with each other. 
please stop um, the bloodshed in Ukraine. Reach out and touch people's hearts, brains, heads, anything you need to touch so they make the decisions to stop the bloodshed. Please help all Ukrainians who have been affected by this bloodshed. Tragedy, by this tragedy. Give them strength, love, happiness, soothing of their souls, recovery, forgiveness, empathy, empathy, mercy. Please help everyone who's helping Ukrainians. God bless them. Send everyone in Ukraine an angel so that the angels keep everyone's everyone out of harm's way. Please help my country, Russia. Send the army of strong angels with sharper swords led by Saint Michael to get rid of the demons that have hijacked my country. Make it right, make it shine, make it peaceful, make it a good neighbor that no one is afraid anymore. God, I would like to ask to give help to the ones who are traveling. Give them safe travels to the ones who are fleeing their countries, fearing for their lives. Please send help and good people their way. Please help those who are seeking political asylum right now. Decisions need to be made soon. Please help them too. Help those who are hungry, send food. Help those who are homeless, send shelter. Help those who are um, whose faith is flattering, send them strength. Send those who are sick, send them recovery. Help them, send them recovery, please. Asking for pregnant women who are deciding faith, fate of their children unborn children, whether to keep them or not. Please reach out to every woman like that and talk to them so they make the right choice. Thank you for bringing us together, dear God. Thank you for making this a very special place in our hearts. Thank you allowing us to pray together. Please help everyone who is praying answer their prayers help everyone who's watching just watching us pray make the wishes come through i would like to ask for a few people um they need your help they're shirley and debbie uh, shirley needs recovery and debbie needs strength to go through hard times um jen allen May the soul of Trenton, Trent Davis rest in peace. Help Finola. Help Lisa's, Lisa's son and husband. And help Susan, Mid, Susan Marshall, please. Um, Lars Hendrick's mother needs help. And La Lars Hendrick as well. The highwayman um, sent faith send calmness Essie from the Scottish Isles Outlander and family Joy, Cherise and the family enjoy every minute uh, please help her um, give strength to go through hard time and may soul of father rest in peace um Please help Lars uh, with pancreas cancer. Send recovery. Help Yelena, Natasha, Jake, Michael, Olya, Dasha, Sky, Bonnie, Galina, Igor, Karen from Maine, Janine, Michael Milkovitz, Bas Simon, Marlene, Paul Bins, Rudy Kaisley, Richard, Mallory M, Dirk Misler, and... <coughs> Please, uh, may father of Dirk rest in peace, please. Uh, James Rhodes, Terry, 
Britney S. Hannah and, and Children, Richard Burris, Angelic at Life, and UK, Scans Family Grandson, Grace, Barb, Randolph, Nelly, Arkady, Yuri, and uh, everyone in Mikolaev, Harry's Family, Verlinda Zniz, Ian James, Doug, Rafaela from and Anna, Priscilla Michelin, King Nero, Gabby Hyman, Donald, Deborah, Lisa's son, Jade, Alice and Dave Moyer, Terry Scrugg, Janice Burgess, Ma- Maureen M. and her sister, Mr. Hanson, Heidi, Bob, Tony, Kyleen, Rob, Umil, Jennifer, Matt, Ashley and family, Mr. Dean Spooner and his church called Our Savior Lutheran Church, and all people who attended. Um, Lisa Kumrian, Jacob, Adam Oliver, Treasure, Kyle's wife, Grace Philosophy, and please help her, her daughter, and her entire family. Maggie, um, Carmen's sister, Vladislav and his father, Sergey, please send recovery. Susie Myler, Gina Wayfarer, MS Paramedic Liz, um, Lori Miles, husband, Sherry, Layla, Philip's mom, and I'm also asking for special children, Cadence, Sebastian, Maverick, Theo, Coulter, and um, Muddy. Please help. The families need help, and um, they need recovery. Please help them. Um, send them healthy home so the families enjoy time with them together and they enjoy a long and happy life and healthy life. I also am asking for all children of Ukraine who have been affected by this tragedy and all children of Russia. May them send them your love and may them grow up good people who are happy. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, my friends. Thank you for coming. Unusual streams. Two streams today. One uh, divided into... I don't know whether I should keep them or just delete. Thank you. You are awesome on your rock. Please come back tomorrow. There will be another message. And before I go, usual. Carthago Delenda Est.